Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 8th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We've got another system moving up into the Gulf of Alaska. We're going to be dry for a couple days here before another frontal system rolls through on Friday. Then we'll take a look at what we can expect as we go through the extended forecast. If you haven't heard or if you've been under a rock for the last day or two, there is a firestorm going on across portions of Southern California. Very strong offshore wind event there as well, so check that out on social media. Uh, taking a look at a nice home weather station I've been recommending. If you click on the link down below, you get 10% off. It's a very nice station. I'm so impressed with it. I actually put it at the top of my pole here. You can see all the guy wires I got set up. There's a Davis Ultrasonic there, and I got an AccuWeather Ultrasonic that I test there. And this is my official Davis 3 cup that I measure uh, my windstorms on. And you can see I zoomed in there as well. So I'm going to test this one out and see how it does against the Davis. Been very impressed with this system. It's all solar powered. The, you know, there's no wire is setting up with this. It's, uh, it communicates wirelessly with the console that goes in the house. So again, highly recommend it. Now, the Spokane National Weather Service seems to always have a graphic out there. There is a bit of snow here coming as we go through the day Friday. Check out Stevens 4 to 6. Maybe a little bit of, maybe a skip there for Spokane. We'll see how that trends. Look out past 4 to 6, though. That is I-90 going back and forth. You see Moses Lake and Ritzville, Pasco, Tri-Cities, Yakima. Not expecting snowfall out of this one. This was updated this morning as well. Now, Portland, Oregon has done something fun here. Oh, they've done a, a yearly roundup for 2024. They talk about the mid-January winter storm. Remember that last year? We got very cold across the region. Heat wave of early July, warmest July on record. August center storm, second warmest September on record. Third warmest December on record. And second warmest year for the airport since 1941. So they go over some of these monthly recaps here as well. And you can go all the way out towards August. They talk about the thunderstorms that move through. <coughs> and yeah so what else uh, interesting stuff here i would like to see all national weather service offices do this and I, there's probably a few others that do but yeah very fun stuff there good stuff from portland national weather service now taking a look at the north american model high resolution so as we go through the day today you can see not much in the way of precipitation some snow showers way off to the east there for portions of yellowstone maybe but we wait for our next frontal system as we go through thursday night tomorrow night you see vancouver island of course starts to get the precipitation first moves on to the washington coast as we go through very early friday morning moves across the puget sound willamette valley some mountain snows not a lot, but it's something here. We'll take whatever we can get because this pattern looks particularly dry as we go through the extended forecast. And this is about Friday afternoon right there as that frontal system continues to push through and starts to bring some snow for the Blue Mountains and the Rocky Mountains of BC, Idaho Panhandle, and Western Montana as well. And if we go through the 24-hour Kuchera ratio, you can see the snow falling for some of the Cascades. Um, higher terrain there for Oregon. It's not much, but it's a few inches. Again, take whatever we can get from Mother Nature. Now, taking a look at the GFS Ensemble mean, the 06Z run last night. So we've been dealing with, um, you know, no Arctic air, even making it really close to the Pacific Northwest. And we kind of continue to watch that as we go through the extended forecast and try to see how this forecast is going to evolve. But this is the Friday system initially here. And again, that's on the day Friday. You can see that one slide through. And then we wait to see what is coming. And it does look like we get a bit of a pattern change here. We have uh, some cooler air trying to make its way into Western Canada here and the Pacific Northwest. But the bulk of that Arctic air looks like it's going to move east of the Rocky Mountains. Here. You can see the ridging right offshore, probably a bit too close to allow for the very cold air to get down here into the western portions uh, you know a little better chance some of that will leak out into places like Spokane, eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho and Montana, Alberta of course we'll get colder and colder air out of this as well as eastern Montana as, uh, as well and then we scroll off into the future and you can kind of see there is a signal for some of this chillier weather to stick with us as we go on into the end of January but we've seen this before it seems to always get pushed back in the models this year they keep trying to show us this hinting at some cooler weather here but again like i said it keeps getting pushed back so if we look at the artificial intelligence european model there's friday's frontal system there good model agreement with that look at all this warm air just flooding back into portions of northern canada but then finally we're going to get a pattern change here and you can see it does bring some of this cooler air here but again the bulk of that arctic air stays east of the rocky mountains we just get the very slightest clip of some of the 
this northerly flow, northwesterly flow, and it doesn't really bring uh, much of a snow chance here into western Washington, southwest BC, western Oregon. And you can see maybe a couple shots of Arctic air there staying east of the Rocky Mountains. Now, wider view of things, here's the extended weeklies, the European, this goes out 46 days. There's Friday's frontal system there. And then we wait to see that pattern change. What does it look like? Again, east of the Rockies, pretty good model agreement on that and maybe just clipping us with some cooler air. And then we go off into the future and it wants to continue to show us this cooler than normal forecast here across portions of Western Canada. So there's always hope in the extended. So if you are looking for a little bit of lower elevation snowfall, hope is not lost and it's likely we will get some chance of some arctic air making at least a pass through western uh, Canada as we go on into the early portion of February. You know, February can be a prolific snow producing month there across Pacific Northwest as well. And I get some interesting comments that, for, um, you know, why am I rooting for Arctic air? Well, you know, there, there's reasons for Arctic air. You know, you want to, it's good to kill off insects here. You, you, you don't want to go too long with, you know, without Arctic air. It, it, again, it can help kill off insects and things of that nature. And a lot of people like to see it. And it really has no bearing on whether or not I root for snowfall into the lower elevations on what, whether this is going to happen or not. I know it causes inconveniences for a lot of people out there, but you know, I, I'm not looking to cause destruction or anything like that. We're just watching for winter weather off into the extended forecast. This is a weather channel. So that's what we're going to look at. That's what we're going to do. And if it shows us being, you know, dramatically warmer, we would be looking at that as well. And we would be looking at ridging and maybe some offshore winds and stuff like that. But yeah, we're just kind of watching. The signal is out there, but it keeps getting pushed back again, like I said. Now, taking a look here at 850 millibar streamline and temperature anomaly on the GFS. This is this morning's run. This is hot off the presses. In fact, let me update this so I have all the most recent data. And I'm going to put this into motion, and you will see that we have the frontal system rolling through Friday. Good model agreement there. You see the warm air flooding portions of northern Canada there and then hopefully that starts to bring some cooler air there we go you got that northwest flow but again the ridging is pretty close to the coastline it doesn't really allow for true arctic air to get down into central British Columbia or southern and you can see the bulk of that kind of state east of the Rocky Mountains there so no joy as far as that is concerned maybe another frontal system way off into fantasy land but yeah that signal keeps getting pushed back yet again um, I've been checking this out here. This was updated on Monday. We technically have La Nina conditions across the equatorial Pacific. We're at negative 0.7. November checked in at negative 0.4. So we're going to have a hard time to get officially into La Nina territory. Sometimes these numbers get adjusted a little bit here, but you need five running three month totals of negative 0.5 or lower to get an official La Nina. And it's going to be really close whether we get there or not. And the atmosphere is not really responding as if it were La Nina conditions right now. But uh, this is, uh, you know, tropical Pacific during the last four weeks. You can clearly see we are cooler than normal across the equatorial Pacific. But again, we're not getting a lot of response here as far as La Nina conditions into the Pacific Northwest yet. But we're still early. I mean, a lot of times La Nina doesn't show until the, you know, the new year. And we're still in, you know, just the, we're just past the first week into the new year. So things still still can change and maybe we'll get a cooler than normal February and some snow chances then and maybe some additional storms rolling through here as we go through February and March. We'll see how that goes. We'll just continue to monitor things. Uh, checking out avalanche.org. Check before you go off into the back country. It doesn't look too bad here. Some moderate out for some of the east slopes of the Cascades. There's Mount Hood here, some of the Oregon Cascades as well. And you can even check down towards Northern California, Western Montana, Idaho Panhandle also. And Without precipitation coming for some of the higher terrain, it's a good thing we're above normal right now for many areas because, as you can imagine, we don't have much snow coming in here for the next couple of weeks, it looks like. And on the 6 to 10 day, that below normal signal exists through the 17th and the 8 to 14 day here as well, all the way through the 21st. Not much precipitation showing up. And if we take a look here at Bellingham, you can see there are a couple of the GFS ensemble members that do show some chillier air. It's not even really that chilly, and most, the vast majority of them don't have any true Arctic air getting down even in towards Bellingham. You can see there's just a handful of some of these ensembles showing some cooler weather, but the, the mean and the control run right now not showing anything impressive as far as cooler uh, colder air. Some of these are pretty, a couple of these are pretty chilly here for places like Spokane, but again, you can see the drop off in the mean a bit, but still 
not a huge Arctic outbreak, at least right now. We'll continue to monitor that. And looking at the European artificial intelligence, I mean, look at this 15-day precipitation anomaly. A lot of places, just huge deficits coming up here all the way up and down the West Coast and North America. So uh, when will the pattern change come? Uh, it'll no doubt come probably at some period as we go through later January, February, or March, you'd have to imagine. But yeah, in the next two weeks, the signal is not strong. There's the GFS, there's the 10-day precipitation anomaly. It came out this morning, and let's see, does the 16-day out yet? It is, and you can clearly see the deficit here for western portions of the USA. So anyway, we continue to watch off to see what's coming in the future, but we do have a frontal system rolling through Friday that will bring some mountain snows. You know, just kind of a garden variety frontal system. We're not looking at any high winds or anything of that nature as well. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.